Embrace the culture shock because mm -hmm. that's how you learn. It's going to happen, yes. Don't go there expecting things to be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go there expecting a challenge. Yeah. Take a chill pill. <laughs> she cool. Psh, psh. No. <laughs> like that. And I'm Your sure. friend is, is like, yeah, yeah that's it. Le goûter, mm -hmm. like this. Bonjour, Marie. Bonjour, Nathalie. Euh, donc, je m'appelle Nathalie. Euh, et donc j'ai grandi près de Paris, à une heure à peu près à l'est de Paris, dans une petite ville qui s'appelle Pionnier. D'accord. Maintenant j'habite aux États-Unis, euh, dans une petite ville qui s'appelle Oxford, au beau milieu du Mississippi. Donc tu es avec Nate. Je suis mariée à Nate. Donc depuis 10 ans. Euh, depuis. Euh, on est sur la 12e année en fait. 12 ans Ouais, bientôt 12 ans. Donc ça fait 12 ans que tu es installée aux États-Unis alors ça fait 10 ans que je suis installée aux états unis oui. parce qu'on a vécu un petit peu en France avant et après on s'est relocalisé là-bas, on a déménagé là-bas. Oui. Nous sommes mariés en France. Nous sommes mariés en France. Ok, c'est mm -hmm. nice. C'est très facile à répondre. Pour moi, ça a été... Euh, j'ai été au magasin et j'ai vu une, une tablette de crunch. Oui. Euh, tu sais, le, avec l'emballage bleu oui. et avec du riz soufflé. Et euh, je me suis dit, ah, un crunch, ah, ça c'est bien, il y en a donc en Amérique, c'est bon. Euh, au moins, c'est un, euh, un goût familier, ça sera bon. Et j'ai goûté ça et en fait, c'était dégoûtant. C'était ah, complètement oui. différent. C'est pas du tout la même recette, c'est pas du tout la même texture, c'est pas le même chocolat, ah, oui. c'est pas la même épaisseur. Enfin, l'emballage le, 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 est à peu près similaire, mais c'est. C'est tout ce qu'il y a de similaire. La déception quoi. La déception totale. totale. Okay. Il y avait ça et il y avait... Euh, en fait, en fait les, mes gros plus, mes, mes chocs culturels les plus importants, c'était souvent lié à la nourriture. Ah, Parce qu'on a des attentes de goût, en termes de goût, et de goûter quelque chose, et de t'attendre à quelque chose, et d'être complètement euh, euh, déçu. Cette attente qui n'est pas... Euh, qui n'est pas, euh, comment dire, enfin ouais, cette déception, c'était ouais. très difficile parce que quand ça arrive une fois, ça va, mais quand ça arrive continuellement, aliment après aliment, dîner après dîner, jour après jour, ouais. mois après mois, à chaque fois que tu veux quelque chose de nouveau, c'est c'est euh, pas du tout euh, ce à quoi tu t'attends. Ouais. Cette déception continue, euh, quelque part, elle, elle affecte vraiment mon ouais. en, en tout cas, pour moi, ouais, c'est euh, quotidien, quoi. Ouais. Ouais. Pas, ou pas, trois fois, ouais, ouais quand on mange euh, trois fois par jour, on a oui. trois fois l'opportunité d'être déçu, ouais. de s'attendre à quelque chose et, de, et finalement de rencontrer quelque chose de vraiment différent. Ouais. Non seulement c'est différent, mais en plus c'est pas bon. Ouais. <rire> ouais. Ouais. Euh, euh, la plupart du temps, ouais. <rire> selon mes goûts, après. Oui, oui. Mais, euh, donc ça c'était, pour moi c'était difficile. Et je me souviens particulièrement du crunch, je sais pas pourquoi. Je me souviens aussi euh, des chewing gum j'arrive pas à trouver des chewing gum qui, qui étaient euh, à mon goût. Oui. Et, euh, et ouais, je pense que c'est euh, le plus gros, ouais, c'était plus difficile. D'accord. And we made some, some pilgrimages. What's that? Pil 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 oh, To some larger cities that had some authentic French Bakeries. Right, but that was no, but it you know. Not every, always. Not <laughs> once a year, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we spent you know several hundred dollars. Oh. Like driving for six hours to a large city like New Orleans. Uh -huh. New Orleans. Um, to get some some you know authentic bread or pastries, mm -hmm. something to help her to yeah um, get over the. Long-term culture shock. Mm -hmm. But there were there were all these appointments. Uh, Maybe so not they were. Time. Yeah, the, some of them were. It's like you drive so far and you yeah. hope so much. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 sometimes you you are disappointed and sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're like, well, actually that was that was respectable. That was yeah. actually good. And so in these moments, I always make a point mm -hmm. to congratulate them. Like mm -hmm. I, I go. To the, if I can talk to the owner, I will. Or if I can just talk to a, a rep and I will tell them, look, I'm from France, I know what's good, I know what's not good, and this is good. Yeah. So good job, keep it up, we'll come back. And oh, nice, nice. So I, try, I always try to be encouraging when, when, I see some, when I taste something good. Uh, I think for me, it was the lack of a sense of community. 
Euh, alors c'est un peu contradictoire, mais euh, donc pour chaque état aux états unis ils vont avoir euh, une spécialité. Donc la spécialité euh, de, de l'état du Mississippi, c'est l'hospitalité. Ouais. Donc en partant de là, encore une fois, c'est déception. Tu, tu ah, te ouais. fais une idée, tu dis ah c'est bien, je suis, j'ai déménagé dans l'état de l'hospitalité. <rire> euh, donc euh, les gens vont être euh, hospitaliers, je vais rencontrer plein de gens, je vais aller chez les gens, je vais me faire des amis, euh, les gens vont être euh, euh, sympathiques. Et ils le sont, euh, de prime abord, ils le sont absolument. Mais par contre, quand il s'agit euh, d'ouvrir sa maison, les gens ne veulent pas leur maison. Ouais. Euh, c'est chacun chez soi, euh, on ne va pas forcément euh, euh, ouais, ouvrir sa porte. Euh, mm. Par exemple, euh, euh, si tu n'as plus de sucre ou tu n'as plus de farine, ou quoi, tu ne vas pas chez ton voisin pour demander euh, un œuf ou de la farine. C'est ouais, quelque que... chose que ça ne se fait pas. Alors ouais. si tu es très proche d'eux peut-être, mais euh, en tout cas là où on habite, c'est... On voit pas ça dans les films, dans les séries américaines, c'est tout, ce ouais. copain copain et... Et je te demande un service, tu un service. Euh... Bah, c'est pas, ça, pas ça. notre, c'est pas mon expérience. Ouais, ouais. Mais après, les, les Atlantes c'est grand. Oui, très, très bien grand. sûr. Oui, oui. Donc après chaque euh, euh, géographiquement, euh, t'as des subcultures qui se créent et mm -hmm. donc euh, t'as des les choses se passent différemment d'état en état et puis même, même pas seulement à, à, à l'échelle de l'état mais même localement euh. et j'ai appris à vraiment euh, garder mes distances à, à pas trop partager trop vite ces choses là ça peut venir mais ça prend beaucoup plus de temps que ce à quoi j'étais habituée ouais, et donc euh, apprendre, à, cette, euh, apprendre à garder une, une distance euh, c'était un petit peu difficile enfin c'est souvent difficile oui, bien sûr. On a, on a fait en sorte de déménager dans une ville où, a, où Nate, Nate il avait de la famille. D'accord. Donc on a les parents de Nate, on a les sœurs de Nate. Euh, donc je savais que j'avais déjà des alliés. Quoi qu'il qu arrive, j'avais une famille et, et, et des personnes qui allaient m'accompagner dans, dans ouais. cette acclimatation. Euh, donc eux, ils m'ont quand même aidé, ils m'ont vraiment guidé, ils m'ont présenté à des gens qui pensaient que peut-être j'aurais des atomes crochus avec ces personnes-là. Et ça a marché, il y a une personne en particulier qui a qui était, euh, culture, enfin, qui, était, euh, qui était née en France, cul culturellement américaine, mais née en France avec de la famille encore en France. D'accord. Donc elle, elle notre amitié m'a beaucoup aidée mm -hmm. à me caler un petit peu sur euh, oui, la, la normalité américaine et locale en particulier. Je me souviens en particulier, euh, une fois, j'avais rencontré quelqu'un et je m'étais dit « Ah, j'ai l'impression que je clique avec cette personne. » En fait, on s'était rencontré à l'hôpital, c'est ça. Euh, à l'hôpital en donnant naissance à nos enfants. Et donc, je m'étais dit « Ah, oh, je, je clique avec elle, je pense qu'on peut devenir proche. » Et une fois, elle m'avait invité chez elle. Je me souviens dans la voiture. Je me suis dit « Ah, oh, je vais vraiment me livrer à elle. Euh, je, je, vais, je vais faire en sorte de mener la conversation pour que la conversation euh, euh, devienne un peu plus personnelle, plus que dans le euh, superficiel. J'avais envie d'aller plus loin que le superficiel. En fait, ça n'a pas du tout marché. Ah, je suis allée chez elle et je sentais qu'elle était mal à l'aise parce que encore une fois, ça ne se fait pas euh, d'aller vraiment chez les autres. Donc elle, déjà, elle n'était pas très à l'aise d'avoir quelqu'un chez elle. Et, euh, je... La conversation, elle n'a pas du tout été là où je pensais qu'elle irait. Je, je suis rentrée un peu découragée. Je me suis dit, mais quand est-ce que je vais me faire une amie proche Quand est-ce que... Voilà. Mais ça vient, ça vient avec le temps, mais ça prend, ça prend beaucoup plus de temps que, que ce que j'aurais voulu. Ok, ouais. Je vois. Um, I think it's kind of the same thing that she mentioned, mm -hmm. is that um, it turns out that French people have a, a stronger social obligation to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, when we lived in France, If we meet her friends, then I'm supposed to happily greet them and introduce myself and be very engaged in their conversations, even if it has no interest to me, right? Oh, yeah. So Americans, are so, we, we tend to be so individualistic that if I don't have anything in common with you, then I'll just go do my own thing. Okay. So even in the same room, you know, I'll be polite, but just hi. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems it almost makes... French people nervous when there's somebody in the visual plane who's not part of the yeah. conversation. And so, again, this is all cultural, but you feel like you're, if you're an American, you can feel that you're like being denied your basic human rights. Like, I have the right 
to just do my own thing, yeah. right? And not like pretend mm -hmm. to be, you know, interested in something I'm not. Okay. So, you know, it's, you might say that in every culture you have like the white lies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just things that you pretend to go along with, um, and they're just different in different places. So again, when I lived in France, um, I think I was an embarrassment many, on many occasions to her because really? I, I didn't really understand that and yeah. I was more individualistic. And then moving to France, uh, moving to the States, even in my own home, um, I had to think more consciously wow. about Natalie and what she was thinking and wanting to do. Oh, really? So if we're in the room, she kind of wants me near her or, you know, being involved. Mm -hmm. And all I'm just thinking, oh, I just want to go over there and get on my computer <laughs> and do my work. Yeah. And uh, for us, we feel, why not? I can be here, you can be there. And then every once in a while, if I think of something interesting, I'll just say it to you. And then I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then go back and do your own thing. We, mm -hmm. we feel together even though we're apart. Yeah. And yeah. Even if I turn my back and I'm working this, I'm facing this direction, it makes her a little bit annoyed. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's an individual. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really wonder. It makes like want to do a, like a social experiment and see how French people feel if somebody yeah. turns their back. You should do that. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that's that's probably been probably been the most difficult. But mm -hmm. we've been. Oh, I have to say. <laughs> So dinner time, right? A lot of culture it revolves around how we eat. Mm -hmm. And I just, it seems that French people really enjoy like getting the table ready. Yeah. Everyone gets up and there's all this, you know, all this energy, everyone working together to put things on the table. And I don't know if it's my family or if it's an American thing, but again, so individualistic, like why am I carrying you know all these extra things to the table maybe we're not even going to use them like different oh, spices or whatever I see, yeah. and also why why do we have to bring all the food here and then serve why don't we just leave it in the kitchen and then serve the plates and then you just bring your own plate mm -hmm. and you eat and then you bring your own plate back and then you're done it's very very individualistic yes very individualistic so in our mind american mind from a practical standpoint let's just keep it simple so dinner time has always been a little bit frustrating, even today. Even today, after 10 years. I just accept it's going to be the French way. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the French way. I just, okay, let's just try to do it fast. Mm -hmm. okay. And try to just, even though there's always something annoying, just enjoy the good part of it. I just want to clarify one thing mm -hmm. about the, the hospitality yeah. thing. So um, I, I do want to say credit where credit is due. Um, mm -hmm. So I know I said earlier, um, hospitality in America is not what we think as is hospitality in France. En français, en France, quand on parle d'hospitalité, on pense oh viens dans ma maison, viens chez moi, uh, on va manger ensemble, je vais partager un repas avec toi. En Amérique, l'hospitalité, when they say hospitality, they think having a beautiful house having a beautiful home, taking very good care of, of your family, taking good care of your children, making sure that your children are, um, your house is very well organized so that your children can grow in a very stable environment. Oh. And then also make sure that your, your conversation is always uh, very smooth, mm -hmm. uh, meaning there's no like you know how to do what we say, small talk. Mm -hmm. uh, when you meet someone for the first time, you're always gonna ask them questions about themselves because everybody loves to talk about themselves. Exactly. So you're gonna ask them, okay, where are you from? Oh, interesting, well, tell me more about that. So mm -hmm. like the way that you converse with someone to make them feel important mm -hmm. or to make them feel at ease, mm -hmm. uh, that's part of hospitality. That's part of being hospitable. It's not so much, it doesn't so much have to do with inviting people in your own home. Okay, that's completely different. So it's a different. completely different yeah. uh, 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 definition yeah, of the term. Really. Wow. Yeah. It's the same word, but two different concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify that. But uh, when it comes to hospitality, um, it reminds me of uh, like politeness. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And my experience living in France and also in other parts of the world is that everyone believes that they're polite. Yeah. Everyone tries to be polite according to their own rules. Mm -hmm. The trouble is everybody's rules are different, depend, you know, according to where they're from. And it's very clear in the U.S. between the Southeast, what we call the South, and the Northeast. In the South, to be polite means to consider other people and um, their relationship to you and their standing in society and to take the time necessary to, to give them the proper recognition. Yeah. But if you go to the North or to the Northeast, the most polite thing you can do is not waste people's time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So yes. these are completely different. Yeah, different averse to each other. Oh. So when a Southerner goes North, and they stand in line, they want to order some food or something. You say, hi, how are you? And then they're going to, you know, take their time before they start ordering. And that is just making the server very angry because they're being very impolite. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. They're doing their best to be polite, but in doing so, they are being very impolite by the others. Yeah. And when, when the Northerners come South, they, they rush to get things done. And every time they rush to like be considerate of others, they're just making everybody around them like very tense. Wow. And and they're judging and saying, Wow, these northerners don't know how to be polite. So when you go to a new place, you, it seems logical that to be polite you would you'd be considerate and do these mm -hmm. certain things. But because the 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 symbols, the gestures you make um, are kind of arbitrary. You're usually wrong. Wow! Mm -hmm. right. So it's it's almost impossible to to be polite in your situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get it right the first time. Yeah. Right? right. You're gonna go. You're gonna make mistakes, and you just have to kind of keep your eyes and ears mm -hmm. open so you can try to quickly learn mm -hmm. what the rules are and make adjustments. Wow! So even for you, an American, uh, you can be wrong sometimes. Oh yes, yeah. yes, I can. Yeah, just. Drive a few hours and then. Wow, just a few hours. Yeah, just suddenly the rules are different. Mm. This is incredible. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to the USA, no. Mm -hmm. I think it was the right move. I think it was. Uh, I I can't. I grew up in the back of my mind. It was always something that. Um, my friends would laugh at me for, oh, Natalie, she's the one that likes to speak English all the time. Mm. Oh, she's the one that likes to talk to American people. I was always like that, and I'm and sure... Your friend is, is like, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, so, I, it's almost like I was born to do that. So mm. when I met him and we became in love, it was, of course, it's natural. Of course mm. I'm going to move to the United States. There's no question in my mind, of course. Um, yeah, I no. did not drag her to the US. <laughs> oh, no. No. No, no, no. no. It was your own choice. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Um, but then in the way, um, I wish I had known more about the culture. I wish I hadn't mm -hmm. educated myself more oh. about maybe the Southern culture. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I could have prepared myself a little more okay. to um, not only protect myself against culture shock, but also to respect people uh, around me because I feel like probably I made some faux pas. Mm -hmm, um, and, and while people are very understanding, um, um, you just don't want to uh, um, have a bad experience. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want people to think that uh, you're trying to hurt them. You're not trying to hurt them, you just don't know what the rules are. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So. Okay, so. Another thing, another difference, and this is related, another difference about French culture, American culture, is that French people, they tend to do things on a schedule. Mm -hmm. There's a certain time of the day when you get up and when you eat your breakfast and when you have le goûter, mm -hmm. like this, there's no goûter, there's, just, there's no like official snack time when everybody in the country just stops what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then you have certain choices for the goûter. Like, you know, it's, if you're going to have a snack in America, what? Some people are going to grab a bag of chips. 
some people are gonna grab some celery. Some and people are gonna get like same time. It's right. Nice. It's just yeah. oh, I feel hungry. Okay, I'm gonna eat something. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, a person who lives on a schedule, it makes them very nervous mm -hmm. when yeah. there isn't this structure. And so, I think it probably took a couple of years for certain people in my family yes. to get used to her being anywhere around because she's always thinking of the time. Like, okay, we have this much time, then it's time to go do that and that and that. Oh, yeah. it, it's and, time and for it's, dinner time, it's time for bath time, it's time for, yeah. So I'm, oh. I was always very nervous. It's true. Right. Oh. And, and nervousness doesn't go well in Southern American culture. No. You're supposed to be really you know, cool. kind of, yeah. I think that's, that's also part of hospitality. You make oh. people feel at ease. You're, uh, oh. you're smooth, uh, you know, and, and so I was not like that. I'm still struggling. Mm -hmm. um, still after, there is after yeah, still yeah. learning. There are always certain yeah. things about your upbringing mm -hmm. that you're not going to change. You say, mm -hmm. okay, I will make some change. Right, you will decide, uh, even somebody who says, oh, I want to go to Japan and I want to be able to speak Japanese and act just like a Japanese mm -hmm. person and wear this exact some people do it and it's kind of scary <laughs> but most people they will say oh i really want to be authentic i want to be able to speak and no one will even know that i'm from another country mm -hmm. until they look at me mm -hmm. but the truth is you really don't mm -hmm. you, you don't want to give up everything about yourself that's true yeah. right. what would you say to you younger self like then i mean what kind of things if you could, <laughs> no, <laughs> I would know. <laughs> wow, what is that now? No, I would, I would say, take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah, that's kind just of relax. Thing, just, just relax. relax. Yeah, it's just gonna relax. be okay. It's gonna be okay. Just take your time mm -hmm. and don't be so stressed out about everything. Okay. And I would have said, hey, try to be more aware. Mm -hmm. You, for you? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, try to notice all mm -hmm. the hints people are giving you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end, just both of you, you just didn't have all the answers to everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we we'll always have to go. That's, that's life. Yeah. Culture shock is the way you learn. Mm -hmm. You have to embrace culture shock because it's exactly what it's the means in which you're introduced to a culture and then you learn the rules and then you live a better life and you can also help to introduce that culture to other people who, mm -hmm. who can't, mm -hmm. even, even local people. A French person is gonna have a very difficult time putting their culture into words. It's actually easier for a, for a stranger, a, oh. an étranger to do that. Wow, okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. And, and I mean, the same is true for, for any culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hardest thing is, um, well, so there's food. There's yeah. definitely food. We addressed that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but the family, my family, uh, and uh, probably my sister. And my sister does not live in France. She lives in another country. Mm -hmm. And so the, the difficult thing is that not only you're far away, but there's also a time difference. The la, um, le décalage horaire. Mm -hmm. Donc ça rend les choses difficiles pour garder contact avec des gens qu'on aime, parce que la vie arrive, on a des enfants, on a du travail, on a des obligations, mm -hmm. on a et donc la, the window of time that is available to you to communicate with friends is not necessarily the same window of time that they have because there is so much time difference in between. There's so many, it just adds another layer of variable to work with in mm -hmm. order to keep in touch with your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, that's very important. Yeah. That's, that's uh, the difficulty. Mm -hmm. And then some of, some members of my family, when they're sick, I can't be there yeah. to help them through. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, you can be here virtually, but physically, uh, yeah. yeah. What about you, Nate? You've been to many different countries. What, what, were you, what, where are you missing the most during these times? I, that's a good question. Yeah. Nothing. 
Oh, yeah, I, I think I think the food. I mean, it, yeah, I keep going back to food. Yeah, I I did. I even when I meet somebody younger who's going to travel, I will often suggest to them make sure that you eat a breakfast mm -hmm. that is as close to home as possible. Oh, okay. So if your stomach is satisfied and you know, turn the right, right mm -hmm. side up, yeah. then you can go through the rest of the day and you can handle the challenges. But if you put something that feels strange in your stomach in the morning, mm -hmm. then all day you can, you can be off. Yeah. And I was used to, um, I mean, I'll never forget the first time I came to France and they presented us with this bread that they're very proud of and with reason. <laughs> yeah. Here's your breakfast. And me and the other, um, the other American guys I was with were like, you're kidding, right? Like, <laughs> we're eating bread for breakfast? Like of that course. just that just doesn't work in yeah. another country. And if you're French and you go abroad, bring your bread with you. <laughs> okay, I mean, okay. it, it's gonna be really difficult to have a, a regular breakfast. Um, okay. But also um, bathrooms. Bathrooms? Yes. That sounds very odd probably, but again I think it's just like, you know, to live your basic life. You know, you wake up, you eat, but you also, you know, get yourself ready. Uh -huh. And the design, the size, oh. um, the place where you put your things down, even uh, the way that the showers are shaped. It's and it's really different from the American. It's it's different enough. Yeah. To to be noticeable. It, mm -hmm. So. When you travel, sometimes you just feel like, as my wife would often say, you feel like you're camping. Oh yeah. Like yeah you can't yeah, get yeah. comfortable uh -huh. because you're just camping, all your stuff is in a bag. Uh -huh. And when these basic things are are different, you can just never feel never feel comfortable. Oh yes. So um, that that's the, that's true when I come to France and I mentally prepare for it. Mm -hmm. But it's a true true if you go to other countries, it's always gonna be a little different and can be okay, yes. kind of tough. Uh, don't hesitate, do it. It's so enriching. It's it's um, it's so enriching. You're gonna meet people that are completely different from you, and you're um, you're gonna be forced out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. and that's what grows you. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. grows. That's what makes you grow. Yeah, and I would say embrace the culture shock because mm -hmm. that's how you. It's learn. gonna happen. Yes. Don't go there expecting things to be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go there expecting a challenge, yeah. and like you know, most things that you learn and enjoy in life, yeah. most and things take take work, and in the end, you'll be really happy. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, Nate, Natalie, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, that was really cool, really well. Wow.